When asked to describe the lovely lady sitting next to me today, uh, terms like legendary keyboardist, influential singer, songwriter come to mind, but you're just Christine McVie. <laughs> I'm just Christine McVie. Christine Perfect. Uh, Christine Perfect. I, I can't believe that's your name. That's, that's a crazy last name. It is kind of nuts. A lot of people used to say to me, is that a stage name? And I used to say, well, how could you imagine I would be that pretentious? I, I understand you know, that's why you kept your married name, just because you... Well, actually, it is, you right. know. And of course, there is the old stock saying that... Uh, I have to say that my ex-husband did make up. So I, I used to be perfect till I married John. Ah! <laughs> you know, it's a very old joke. So you had to, you had to be there. I guess. Well, there's a good reason Christine Perfect McVie is with us today, and that's because she's got a new album in stores. It's called In the Meantime, and it's uh, a return to the classic McVie sound and production fans have come to love over the years. In fact, Mojo Review uh, recently said. Uh, the songs cackle with ire, indignation, and with none of the frothy self-deception of the past. What the heck does that mean? I have no idea. I mean, that's the first time I've heard that. Really? Well, the I just say what? it's a good album, and I like it. Frothy self-deception of the past. I don't understand what that means, but I, is that a compliment or what? Oh, okay. Mojo, they're all still. Thank you, Mojo. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, first of all, congratulations on what's uh, obviously be becoming a surprise success for you with the album Two and the surprise. radio airplane. Yeah, yeah. People are buying this thing like hotcakes, and for good reason. It's a great album. Um, but having you here, I can't let you go without at least having a little conversation about the greatest album of all time in my book, which is Rumors. Is that cool? Sure, and as my wife, it is our best record, I think. I was wondering, it's like when you guys were making that record, obviously things were going on at the time, but did you know, there was, was there a spark in the air that you knew it was happening at the time? Well, I think we felt there was something electrical happening on the previous album. I mean, I think we sensed that the, the, the chemistry between the five of us was, was pretty amazing. When, they, when Stevie and Lindsay joined the band, we didn't even audition them, we just sort of met them and we said, that's kind of it, you know. In fact, I think I went back to England the next day and on a holiday or something. And uh, we just met over Mexican food one evening and just said, OK, you're in. I heard that you got final call on Stevie joining the band, though. Isn't that true? Well, I mean, it, it was obviously subject to me getting on with it because I've been so used to being the only girl in the band. And, of right. course, you know, Nick was going... What if Christine doesn't like Stevie? You know, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, because originally it was it was Lindsay that, that Nick and John were interested in, in having. And then Lindsay said, well, we come as a duo. So, I mean, it wasn't even an issue. Uh, we, we, we met, met uh, over, as I say, Mexican food and really liked them straight away. Wonderful. The great power of Margarita. The great power of the... Yes, actually, a couple of margaritas. But, but I always remember, you know, Stevie has the most fantastic sense of humour, so she was pretty easy to like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, when you made Rumours, uh, obviously... Did, so you all wrote four songs on the album? Is that how it worked? On, on Rumours? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're always quite democratic, mm -hmm. musically. I mean, uh, we, we never seem to argue much about anything musical really everything else really? but not not so much music well i mean think of it logistically i mean there's three writers so and there's 12 songs usually on an album so uh, it, it just seemed um i mean there was never any sort of preferential uh writer there was always, it would always be sort of roughly three or four songs per person okay but getting back to the to the magic thing when you did Rumors, or when you do any album specifically, do you know when that spark happens when you're writing a song? I th well, I think you you know when you start to kind of work on a song and, and the, the drum pattern becomes easy. When it's not laboured, I suppose, it is, is as close as I can get to describing it. But then, on the other hand, you can labour on a song and, and change things about it which you don't like, and it can become a... a a star of a song so it, I mean I don't think there are any definites you know in songwriting it's all the, the you know the chicken and the egg mm -hmm. it's hard really hard for someone that writes songs to describe how how they get to be as good or as bad as they are mm -hmm. it's just a really tough thing well for me anyway mm -hmm. well the planets were aligned on that one and when it was finished when you finished that recording session were you all like yeah we did it. Yeah, I think we knew there was some... I mean, because we were in such a bubble, mm -hmm. we were locked away in Sosalito, away from 
everyone except just our immediate sort of peripheral crowd. Mm. And, uh, but we knew within that bubble that there was something really brilliant there. I, I don't think we had it for one moment any idea it was going to be as mm -hmm. successful as it was. I imagine that's a blessing and a curse because after that point you're always probably trying to recreate that. Well, I think, yeah, that's what happened with Tusk is that we went completely the other way. Mm -hmm. Uh, to do something completely not commercial and I mean because we didn't really think the rumors we didn't th consider it to be commercial as we were making it mm -hmm. we didn't realize that but obviously when it came out and, and became as successful as it was mm -hmm. when Tusk arrived we decided to make a double album and to make it as obscure as we possibly could complete with marching bands Complete with that, you, you name it. You yeah, know, why crazy. would you call an album Tusk and yeah, right. two elephant Tusk yeah. and write a song called Tusk? I God like sake. that song. I mean, what the hell does that mean? You know, <laughs> say that you love me, Tusk. Right. And what does it mean? Right. I have no clue. But <laughs> Mick Fleetwood is an odd man. There's no doubt. Um, all right. Well, there was obviously a lot of spark in this as well, and we're going to come back and talk more with Christine McVie one more time around here on All Star Jams. We're hanging. Mm -hmm. 